Joe Mullings from 160 Studios in Delray Beach. And today on the line, I've got the ever powerful, ever wonderful Brian Johnson, the president of Mass Medic up in Massachusetts. Brian, how are you? I'm great, Joe. Thanks for having me. I'm in a uh, studio uh, <laughs> closet office in Brookline, Mass. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's cozy, I bet, nonetheless. It's that time of uh, year in Boston, too, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. You can smell it in the air, but it's, it's you know, we're still, summer's still trying to, trying to, trying to stay alive. Yeah, yeah. So, Brian, you know, we, we always visit back with you. You're sort of a touch point for the industry. Um, Boston certainly in itself is a touch point for the industry and Boston strong holds true uh, in most of these uh, situations. And again, through the pandemic and you sit at the helm of a very powerful and important organization, Mass Medic. So uh, for those two people in the world, in the med tech industry who follow us, who might not know who Mass Medic is, I always wanna make sure we open up with explaining Mass Medic, its mission and your role. Sure, sure. Well, Mass Medic uh, has been around since 1996. It's the trade association representing the manufacturers of medical technology in Massachusetts and New England. Um, you know, what we are and what we do has changed dramatically over the course of 2020. Um, you know, we're, uh, you know, now we, uh, you know, we produce a ton of virtual programming. We do a lot of education. We do a ton of advocacy. Uh, we, and we, have connect, we connect people at this point, really, and uh, starting with the work we did early in the pandemic, connecting the state to the med tech resources they need to now helping these companies navigate the new normal. So we're, we got our hands in everything. The number of virtual pivots I've watched, I sit, I'm fortunate enough to sit on the board with you. I think I'm the only person outside of Massachusetts who sits on the board. Uh, I never read the fine print of the, uh, the board, but, you know, the virtual pivot that you and your organization have orchestrated is just amazing. And I know it was out of survival, but it was also clever on the types of programs you're putting on and the support from the community you've gotten. Right. Thanks, Joe. And, and you know, Massachusetts is a state of mind. So we, uh, <laughs> we welcome Massachusetts South down in Delray Beach. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah, necessity is the mother of invention, right? But... Um, you know, I always knew and I've always felt that my role at Mass Medic was to create branded programming uh, that, that create content that you couldn't find anywhere else and create it for a certain specific niche. Um, you know, we have produced more than 50 virtual events since March. We pivoted on the first week to create a virtual town hall that we held weekly. Uh, and then we just started to really create virtual programs, really think of this as a television studio and thinking of, you know, what does Zoom provide us with? Well, it actually provides us with an incredible place to have the community that we always wanted. And, um, you know, uh, it's, I feel really privileged and uh, that, that I get to work with this community, but uh, I, I'm just so proud of the program we put on from women in med tech, uh, to uh, corporate social responsibility programming, about to uh, supplier showcase events where we bring in buyers from med tech companies and get them to tell us what they're looking for and, and, and kind of provide that to the service provider community. Um, you know, interviews, showcasing new companies, creating, uh, you know, creating podcasts. I feel like this kind of has unlocked a lot of creativity. I mean, you don't have to think about so much the where and the when and the, um, you know, what are you going to, what kind of uh, finger food you're going to put out? And you just kind of, you kind of go with it, put out a, put out a good genuine piece of content and, 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 you know, do what the internet's great at. It's great at creating little shareable moments. Yeah. Distribution, connectivity, nodes that uh, weren't connected previously. That's certain, certainly a bright spot on this and I'm hoping, or no, I, I know it will. A lot of this will carry over whenever that horizon has been declared on the other side of this. Is there, in, in the community up there, what's the feel right now? Uh, you know, you're on the ground. Uh, we mm -hmm. spend a lot of our time up there as well. Uh, but what does the community feel like from a tech perspective, an investment perspective? Take me through that. Well, you know, Joe, it's been actually a very uh, exciting last eight weeks or so. And, um, 
you know, I think the we had a summer, but you know, I don't think I've ever seen an August that produced that many funding rounds and uh, that much action and activity. And I it just I, I felt like over the past eight weeks, um, you know, you're starting to see a tremendous amount of capital closing. Uh, a lot of companies getting A rounds, B rounds, even up to E rounds. Um, we had a, a bonanza in the past six to eight weeks. And, um, you know, some of the ones that I, you know, I, I want to highlight because they're members is, uh, you know, conformal medical. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I was, I watched the CEO talk about how hard it was to raise money. And, and then lo and behold, he's closing an $85 million round. And, uh, you know, vicarious surgical, really cool robotic surgery platform. They closed around. Um, but, you know, that, nothing makes me more excited than um, this, a company called CoreMap, which came out of our Ignite program, our startup accelerator. Uh, they raised $11 million um, in, in September. Um, and I, I have to tell you, you know, when we re-kicked off Ignite, you know, we were hoping for some wins. I don't think we ever thought our first class would produce a company that would raise $11 million. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're thrilled. I'm thrilled for Sarah, the CEO. Uh, she's a dynamo. Um, and she's done a great job. And they're going to really, they're going to make some incredible progress. So you mentioned the Ignite program. Certainly I'm familiar with it. Some of our viewers may not be. Can you give me a, yep. a quick ditty on that? Sure. Uh, Ignite is our our virtual accelerator program for founders of med tech companies. And we take everybody from, you know, uh, physicians who are looking to kind of make the pivot up to companies that, you know, are, are, are raising their seed round or, or trying to raise an A round. And we take them through a roadmap of med tech entrepreneurship. And we start basically at the beginning, you know, how do you, how do you split the pie? When do you split the pie? Um, take them through all the machinations of med, you know, medical device development and uh, all the regulatory issues they're going to have to understand and learn, really give them the whole roadmap. Uh, we are knee deep in our second cohort right now. We just did an awesome um, uh, pitch program where we basically took, you know, uh, 15 or so companies and we took all their pitch decks, shuffled them, and then dealt them out randomly to their cohort mate. So they had to pitch each other's company. And, uh, you know, it's like, you know, little things like that, which is actually just kind of feels like a table read in a theater, uh, you know, I think produce really great results. So, you know, we're, we're trying to impact this industry from the very smallest to the very largest companies. And I think that that's, that's the beauty of, of, of this position. The Ignite program as well is, uh, it's not just a bunch of slouches giving guidance. We're talking about some heavy hitters, oh, yeah. right? So can you share a little of who those mentors and guidance uh, 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 personnel are? Sure. Uh, I mean, we have, uh, you know, we have a MIT, BU, Cornell professor, Matt Marks, one of the top minds in entrepreneurship, teaches, um, teaches our, uh, our boot camp on equity. He's probably one of the smartest guys in the world when it comes to that. Uh, we had we have private fireside chats from David Lucchino, who's the founder of Frequency Therapeutics, which just had an outrageous uh, study results where they restored hearing in people with hearing loss. Uh, first time ever done in human. Uh, you know, he comes on and does a, a, a virtual fireside chat for 30, 20 people. Uh, we have, you know, our partners at Alira Health, and we get, uh, they bring their folks in to teach. We have top IP attorneys in the state, in the, in the city come and teach. Uh, you know, we get great investors to come on and talk about this. Um, you know, and then, you know, we go in and, and we reach in and bring in uh, seasons executives from the big med tech companies to come and talk to them about how they get on their radar. Um, it's a, it's a really, it's a fun, fun thing. It's very inspiring. I have to tell you, um, you know, those, those sessions energize me and I learn a lot. Who, who can join? How do I join? Uh, is there a cost? So Ignite is a, uh, it's a, it's a year long program. And so you have to apply, uh, and the applications start in the beginning of the year. And, um, you know, so we're about, 
uh, four or five months in right now. We're prepping everybody right now for uh, the MedTech Showcase, which will be a big pr- uh, pitch showcase that we're having in November, November 4th and 5th. We're doing it in association with Biomed Device, which is one of the biggest uh, trade shows in, in the MedTech industry. It's in Forma Markets produces that. Um, we're we're going to be we're not only going to showcase our Ignite companies, we're going to bring in uh, several of these uh, companies that just raised some A rounds and uh, showcase them as well. And uh, our Ignite companies are going to basically pitch with a chance to uh, win some some prizes. Um, but you know, it's a it's it's a year long endeavor. Uh, there's a lot of um, we have, we do open office hours. We do we people get mentors. Um, they're working with. You know, we do a lot of matching and then, you know, we, we get in there and if we find that their technology is complementary to a potential strategic partner, we'll make the intro. Uh, we do a lot and uh, the program is supported by industry, and by sponsors and supporters. We have the Mass Life Science Center, Propel, Alira Health and Boyd Technologies uh, supported us in 2020. And in 2021, we're, we're definitely looking for more partners. Um, you know, we want to you know, this was a in-state only program, but uh, the, the virtual pivot allowed us to open it up. So now we even have people, you know, we have one company from India participating and uh, it's cool. You know, we get to expand our reach and we want to continue to grow this program because, you know, those folks um, who are building companies, they're the, that's, that's the energy and the juice that's going to keep us going. So we want to make sure that they have support. Hundred percent, and um, it's if you haven't been MedTech Showcase um, and the Biomed Device, you totally want to attend this year. No excuses because there's no travel restrictions, right? So you that's can right. All you got to do is, yeah, you don't even have to put on pants, guys. <laughs> that's right. Just, just keep it all. Bu- it's like <laughs> keep it all business from the waist up, right? That's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> So how's Boston in general? Uh, before we went on, you and I were talking about Boston yeah. in general, and certainly, I think, respectfully, one of the grittiest, most intelligent, driven cities in the United States, no doubt about it. And uh, how how's the city faring from your perspective? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. I think it really depends on where you sit, right? Um, I'm very lucky. I, I work in the life sciences industry. This is the Hollywood of health technology, um, you know, for us, a global healthcare crisis highlights our, you know, the, our highlights how important this industry is, highlights how important this work is, and has been very uh, affirming of the work we do. Um, I think for us, uh, the challenge is all uh, things like social isolation, not being able to, you know, socialize as much with friends and and go to parties and do the things that make working your butt off worth it, right? Uh, you know, but if you go to the other side, people that uh, people that work in the service industry, people that work in restaurants, um, you know, we've had a summer, a nice summer, a really nice summer, good weather. So there's a lot of bars and restaurants that have outdoor seating and they're making it work. But, you know, we're, you, you winter, uh, the fall and the winter, they're, you know, that's coming and it's, and it's not like we can avoid that. And I, I just think that we're, you know, we're seeing a lot of this city change um, and not in ways that are great. You know, uh, part of what makes life worth living is, the, is in a city is the access you have to cultural institutions, to your neighborhood bar, to, um, you know, to going out to eat. Uh, you know, you just, you can feel that that, that that's missing. And uh, I'm concerned, you know, I'm concerned about what I, what I think of as, you know, not clinical comorbidities to a pandemic, but social comorbidities. Um, kids that uh, should be uh, in school, uh, sitting in front of their screens, um, you know, uh, public school systems really having a hard time keeping up with this. Um, and then, you know, we were hit so hard in the beginning, there's, there's almost a fear and an, 
and an anger that we're going to go back. And, you know, there's finger pointing and things like that. And, you know, I think, I think we have to be really realistic about where we're at in this pandemic. We have had a, a good productive summer. We've had a very big lull. The numbers will rise. We will face another moment of reckoning, but we have to guard against sort of the breakdown of our social fabric, right? We have to, we have to deal with the, the social comorbidities of depression and mental health and, you know, turning ourselves inside out. Um, you know, there's no question, Joe, we need, we, we supposedly do a lot of testing in Massachusetts, but it's hard to get a test here. Mm. And even if you get a test, it's a three day test result. And what the hell good is that? Right. Right. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things when you, when you, when you drill down, it doesn't, it's not great. And it's, it, it feels like, you know, it feels like we're, we are nowhere near out of the woods here. Uh, we got a long, a lot more time here uh, dealing with this. And, you know, the key is going to be how do you motivate yourself to do the, the long haul stuff. And, uh, you know, I struggle with that. Uh, but I, you know, I, I walk through the city sometimes and I do get a little sad because it's like, huh, you know, there is a, a buzz, a vibe that's gone, you know, and I don't know if, it, you know, when is it coming back? I don't know. Yeah. Well, the good news is it is going to come back. I do that. I'm up there twice a month and my walk from Faneuil, through Faneuil Hall from the Marriott waterfront to the north end and hitting uh, uh, Neptunes and certainly catching a good cappuccino espresso in the north end. Um, I'm looking forward to that. The good thing about Boston is, and it's the appropriate thing, the Boston Strong definitely will come back. The MedTech population up yeah. there do nothing but kick ass. Um, yeah. And I, I think that the fact that we're surrounded by great thinkers up there, um, a strong, strong industry, uh, manufacturing will come back strong. And I think in general that Boston culture will pull people through. That's one of the interesting points about Boston is um, it tends to leave nobody behind consciously. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that population up there will make sure that certainly um, is, is, is at the front of their mind. So. Yeah, I think certainly this city and this region has always been very good at reinventing itself. It yeah. has always been great at uh, pushing, the, pushing the needle forward, creating new technologies. Uh, we've lost as many industries as we've created, which yep. is kind of a unique thing. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm, I'm so proud to be part of this community. I, I, the med tech community, it's life sciences, it's it's awe inspiring yeah. to be a part of it. And um, we, but we appreciate what I appreciate what you said. Uh, it's, it's very, it's, it's nice to be that, that that's the reputation we have on, you know, yeah. sometimes we deserve it. Yeah. No, you guys do deserve it. There's what, what is there? There's, 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 um, there's sports, politics, revenge, and grit is what I think about. <laughs> those, those are the four hobbies of Bostonians. You, yeah, you might want to put revenge up there a little higher. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, before we head out, I saw a piece. Um, I got a preview of the Boyd Technologies piece, and you had a yeah. really, I would call it a star cameo role in that. Would you uh, shed a little light on that before we take our viewers out? And uh, and I'll put a link on here where they can find that. I do believe it's already gone out, or it will go, by, go out by the time this goes out. Yeah, so uh, I was really thrilled to be a part of it. Boyd Technologies is a great company out of Lee, Massachusetts, which in the middle of the pandemic um, – very early on pivoted to be a part of the solution creating uh, they've, they've, they're spinning up a, uh, a manufacturing line for N95 masks. And they were part of this manufacturing emergency response team that was formed in Massachusetts. And um, they uh, they're chronicling uh, they're chronicling this journey of uh, these pivots from manufacturing companies uh, to help create PPE for the pandemic. And it's called project frontline. And it's a documentary and uh, they're interviewing all sorts of folks in Massachusetts who were there um, and a part of it. And um, it's, 
We just had the premiere last week. It was down in Pittsfield at the Berkshire Innovation Center for it. It's a great piece. Um, Got to check it out if you haven't seen it. Yeah, you know, it brought it brought a, a, a lump to my throat a few times watching it, diving back into that, diving back into that uh, mo those moments in, in March. But I think it's really important because we have to think about, you know, uh, our our my grandfather, you know, our, the generation that I think shapes the United States' image of itself is that of the World War II generation, right? And you think of the prolonged struggles they endured, um, a, a pandemic of their own that lasted multiple years, uh, the Great Depression, World Wars, you know, they they learn how to deal with it for the long haul. And, you know, this is, this, this seems to be our cross to bear and it's not something that's just going to go away overnight. We have to deal with it for a long time. So, you know, I think it's important to take a moment, even in the middle of the fight to reflect upon how far we've come because we have come far. Yeah. Yeah. And that Boyd technologies piece, what was the name of it again? Project Frontline. So Project Frontline, you can go to Boyd Technologies. It's probably on their website. I know it's on LinkedIn by now. Yeah, um, I think we're going to be on Amazon Prime too at some point. Cool. Awesome. And we're going to highlight that. Well, my friend, as usual, always good catching up. Usually it's over a beer downtown, but this will do for now. Um, <laughs> Next time it'll be a very, very big beer. <laughs> for sure. For sure. For sure. Well, keep holding the industry together up there for us. Um, I'm with you, and uh, it's always a pleasure. Thanks, John. Thanks for what you do. It's 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 great to continue to watch the growth of uh, of, of this this empire you got. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. This is Joe Mullings from 160 Studios. Be well. <laughs>